When you collect information within a list, for example, let's say you have multiple tasks assigned to an individual in a list. We'll just use Jeff in this example, easy name to remember. And you have an associated time used, for example, or estimated time to do those tasks. Those are other columns within the list associated with that one specific task assigned to Jeff. Well, how do I get those numbers back out of the list? And how do I do some math functions? Like, how do I divide the total number of used versus estimated to see if I'm on or off? Well, that uses a div function within flow where we actually go from power apps where we collect the data points what's a person's name and how many hours are available for this person then we pass those variables into flow flow does the math and then pops the information back into into uh, power apps now in this example we're going to actually look at it with a manual trigger, but you could put any trigger you want. This could be a trigger that you select that runs, I don't know, periodically to gather data or statistics. And the division and the logic behind it will work for anything pretty much that you're developing. So stay tuned. Sorry for the long introduction, and we're gonna jump right to it. Okay, so here we're, I explained all that. So if, again, these books are out available. You can purchase them, but you can just pause the video and capture this if you need it. Add this video to your collection of videos on quick tips on how to do things. That's what I do. That's why I create these videos. So it might work for you too. So here we're going to use the get items. So we have a manual trigger. We have a get items right here. And you can see we have the site address, a list name. Now here I'm doing a query assigned equals Jeff. Now, if you don't have this interface, remember that the code is assigned. Well, here I can show you. Well, it's just assigned EQ, you know, assigned space EQ space quote Jeff. And, and then it will find it. Same thing. But here you can do that. Now I have an order by, I just put it in there just so you could see. I don't actually have it doing this because it doesn't matter in this example. But just wanted to throw that out there. And then top count. I always put a top count in if it's going to be more than 100 records because if you don't although flow will tell you that oh yeah well everything else is default it doesn't work so anything over 100 i always put a number in 500 thousand whatever works okay now we've got this information from the get items we're going to go ahead and select it and i'm going to at the end of the video kind of walk you through the stages of how this actually occurs and show you where these numbers are coming from so we're going to program it first, then I'm going to show you a run of what it looks like. Okay, so here we're going to have a select value. And this select value, we're pulling here from this get items. And all we're doing is we're looking for the estimated minutes. That's all we're doing. Pretty simple. Whoops, let me flip down to there. We're right here. We're just looking for those estimated minutes. So I'm going to show you again in once we get done going over this, where we collect that. But we're going to get those estimated minutes. And then we're going to do a little bit of JSON here, right here. Just follow exactly what it says here. This is a compose action. Don't worry about it. This is the output, by the way, from this select. Okay. Then we're going to run XML. And here's the code right here. That's the code for the XML. And you can see it highlighted here on my screen as well. Again, I know I'm going fast. Pause the video um, if you need to. Now we're going to sum up everything. So you're going to need these. this select is important, JSON, XML, sum. Those are very important. Make sure you code them exactly like is written here and you should be good to go. Then I'm just going to initialize this variable. Now, because this is a number, I'm initializing it as a string. Okay, Excuse, as, a, as a string. Um, because I want to get the totals there and you're going to see it as the as the result here in just a moment. And I'm going to use the string in other places. But notice here we have div output sum. You can see right there is the code div outputs. So this outputs right here is from here. And then this 60 will be the number that we collect inside of Power App. So in the app, it'll actually show a variable there. Or you can hard code it like I've done here. Um, in your application as well. So let's go ahead and go back and look at one of the runs that um, that works here. Okay, so here we're doing a manual trigger. We're getting the item 
And you can see here with the get items, um, if we do a click download, it's going to show us um, it's going to show us all the data. Well, let's do that real quick here. Hold on. So if I click on downloads here, notice that I'm seeing all of the data. So let's just go ahead and put that in here. Control V. And then um, we're going to go ahead and go over where we can see the values. Well, you can see the values here. Um, oh, there it is right there. Okay. So you see headers. Okay. So I have 44 entries in there. And you can notice right here, assigned Jeff, non-case sensitive, by the way. Okay. So let's go back to where we're the run. Now we're going to do all of this selection where we're only going to select the estimated minutes. That's all we're selecting. So what does that look like from a raw output? That's what it looks like right there. All of these numbers, because we're going to calculate all of these numbers. So then we're going to parse that out and notice here that the sum then equals 370 and our parsed, we can see not a lot to see there. Okay. And we can see the JSON building out here too. Okay. So 370, then we're going to just simply initialize that variable and we get 6.16. Uh, that is the total uh, value of 370 divided by um, whatever it was, 60. So that's that's kind of how you do that. Now, now that this variable has been initialized, we can use this variable total time and pump that back into our application so people can view it. Now, usually from here, I create a small list just for that field data. It's a temporary list. I delete it when I'm done with it, but I just kind of move that data point over there so that then I can point my app directly to it. But there's lots of ways you can do it using collections and different variables you can pass back into Power Apps. So whatever works for you. That's how you do division. That's the basic concept behind division outputs, XPath. So if you just follow this step by step, I guarantee you that anything that has a number associated with a record, you're going to be able to calculate. So it could be time, could be anything. And then remember that you can go ahead and do those math functions like we did here. You can go ahead and do that math function right here. We're just doing division, but addition, subtraction, multiplication, percentages, all kinds of things are available to you within flow that you can calculate, manipulate that number into anything that you need to use. I hope this works for you. It does work for me. I use it all of the time. Good luck.